Well, Dr. Shannon, thank you so much for taking time to hang with me today. Absolutely. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. Yeah. So let's talk about dating ourselves. Okay. I, I, I've probably dated myself, but I, I maybe just wasn't as intentional as I'm hearing that you want me to be, or um, specifically this book I know is more written for women, but I'm going to read it anyway. I've already been reading through it. Um, why do you think it's so important for women and even men to date themselves? You know, you think about it. How do you meet people and how do you fall in love? Well, you date them. You know what I'm saying? So no different than when you're having a relationship with someone else. If we don't date ourselves, how are we going to know ourselves? And if we don't know ourselves, how are we going to fall in love with ourselves and really, truly be able to love others? Because it's how we love ourselves that we love others. So it's vital for all humans to learn how to date themselves. And you mentioned, you know, maybe you've been doing it, but not, you know, consciously. I think it's very important to be very, very intentional about it. However, it's not like you have to sit down and sit across from yourself every day and share a nice meal or whatever. But on the other hand, it's really that conscious intention of saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to get to know you. And as I get to know you, there's more to explore, more to experience. And that's really how we can fall in love with our, our lives. So I, I come from a faith background that almost, I, I think part of what you're saying rubs against a part of me that says, um, I, if I love myself in that way, that I'm somehow being egotistical, that it's like somehow like, you know, all about me as opposed to it should be about other people. But like you said, how, how can we love other people if we don't first love ourselves? Is that, that's part of what you're saying, right? Absolutely. And you, you really hit on a, a really big topic, David, because that's kind of the whole idea. People think, oh, that's so selfish. And I'm also faith-based. I mean, I'm a follower of Jesus. So it's like, you know, I read the word and the word says the second commandment besides loving God is that we love others as we love ourselves. And so, especially for people of faith that know that, it's like we, we tend to forget that. And that's the most vital thing. How can we love another if we don't love ourselves? And really, how can we love ourselves if we don't love and know God? Because that's in our DNA, you know? Love is in our DNA. Hmm. So, um, so, yeah. And then the whole idea of self-care, you know, people think, oh, that's selfish. But how can you go out and pour into another cup if you're empty? And so it's one of the most selfless things that we can do. Instead of saying, hey, I'm just here to serve everyone else. Well, for one, that's not really true. Because people that do that, they end up burning and crashing. And then it serves no one, including the greater good. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And I learned it the hard way. David, I mean, all this, it didn't come from a, just an idea and it didn't come from just reading the word. I can tell you that. I mean, like it came from crashing and burning and finding out like there's got to be another way to this because I was broken. At least I felt broken. I felt empty. I felt like I had given everything. And then where do you turn? Well, you turn to the one that gave you life and love and you say, all right, there's got to be another way. Mm. And so dating ourselves, this idea of intentionally spending time with ourselves and getting to know, like it, when I met my wife, I just wanted to be around her all yeah. the time. And I wanted to ask her questions and I wanted to do fun things with her because it was, part of it was new and exciting, of course, but there was a genuine interest in getting to know her. So, you know, you're kind of expanding my mind to go, all right, if I'm going to learn to love myself at an even deeper level, that means that I want to get to know myself. Now, why would you say that I don't already know myself? I mean, I've been in this body a long time. Like, how would I not already know myself? Okay, great question. First of all, we kind of like when we, when we fall in love with someone else, we get to a place in the relationship where we think we know everything about them. When the real reality is we are constantly growing and evolving as people. And to really experience the fullness of the life that we have, it's a constant and never ending process of learning and relearning and unlearning. So when we get into this idea that, oh, I know myself, then I'm like, uh, 
that's a problem because if you fully know yourself, then you've stopped looking for more to know. And you've stopped really exploring and discovering what you can do in the process of doing what I believe we're all here to do on planet Earth, which is to grow and expand and then express that. So it's vital. I mean, you can be with somebody. Think about this, David. You could sit next to somebody for the next 100 years and not know them. You could be with somebody and know certain things about them, but never know them. So we can be with ourselves and really never be with ourselves, especially when we never spend any time really in that quietness of saying, what do I like? What do I not like? Or is it based on the experiences through other people's whole lot, you know, um, views and expectations and shoulds and woulds and coulds? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's vital. It is vital and it is a game changer. It is a life changer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much of life can be that how much am I trying to live up to my family, home of origin, um, or if I have a, a strong life partner, spouse, man, yeah. am I trying to please, you know, him or her, even trying to please my kids, you know, I, I got to fit in a mold to fit into what they want me to do. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's powerful. All right. So I know in, in the book, you talk about some lies or some syndromes that people are prone to buy into when we're in this process of learning to love ourselves and love other people. Can you uh, like break those down for me? Absolutely. The first one being that I call it kind of the Cinderella syndrome, whether you're a, a woman or a man, like this idea that somehow there's going to be this moment where, you know, Prince Charming comes and sweeps you off your feet, or you're going to find, you know, the princess that's going to be the perfect princess. And we're going to ride off in the sunset. It's like, that's not how it works. You know, I talk about the whole Cinderella syndrome, like there is a, you know, what happens when the glass stiletto shatters and now like, what do you do? And really, do you want to be sweeped off your feet or do you want to learn how to stand on your feet and walk in your Cinderella slippers, you know? So this whole idea that there's going to be even a Mr. Right or a Miss Right you know, especially coming from a woman's perspective, like this idea that there's going to be a Mr. Right, but you know, the bottom line is, am I willing to be Miss Right? Am mm. I willing to get, un, you know, give myself the understanding and to give myself the attention and the love so that I can be that to myself and someone else? So I think that's a big part of it. And we buy into the lies that so somehow someone else is going to complete us. Mm -hmm. I, like how you, I like how you, I like how you asked, like, you know, what happens when Prince Charming turns into Prince Harming? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, or our, our, you know, our princess, all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, she's kind of a witch, you know? And it's like, well, we all have that within us. I mean, when we start to really embrace and acknowledge both the dark and light within us, we are then able to do that for others. But if we stand in this place of this polarity of like, somehow I got it all right, and I'm going to expect Mr. Right to get it all right, and to never disappoint, well, then we get into this idea that everything has to be a certain way, which again, is not allowing for our growth and our discovery. And it also puts us in a place of judgment. Now we judge the person we're with because we're judging ourselves. And now it just becomes this real mess. Mm. And now everybody's trying to perform to what we think the world says is perfect or great or good and right instead of saying, but this, this, isn't, even, this isn't even true. Mm. So the lies that people buy into are all the lies that we believe in our heads that somehow somebody else is responsible for my happiness. Mm -hmm. That just can't be that way. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just not, that's not the truth. Sure. And the second one that you talk about is the disengagement syndrome. Break that down for me. Yeah. So what usually happens, David, and this happened in my own life, is that you go through life and then you have these disappointments. And then you start to kind of pull back and go, gosh, you know, maybe it's not what I thought it should be. And all of a sudden you find yourself kind of pulling further away from 
your dreams, your desires, and those that really love you because it's like, I've been hurt now. And so now who do I trust, you know? And so people, I did, I started kind of pulling into this place and my world became a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. And I disengaged and was no longer fully expressing in, in my life. And, and really, I call it like really nine primary areas of life. We kind of start to pull back. And when that happens, we get disengaged. And then eventually, and not for everybody, but I call it, you know, really, it's a, dis, it's a divorced heart. And eventually, a lot of times leads to divorce for people or breakups or broken relationships. And I really believe it comes from that broken relationship that we have with ourselves and that dis disengagement starts subtle, starts with disappointment, and then goes to disengagement and then like fully disengaged. Next thing you know, your head and your heart aren't even connecting. You're not connecting with your life anymore. You're not connecting with your dreams and your soul purpose. And then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, then nobody seems to kind of fill that void for you. So you're like, oh, I don't like you anymore. And all of a sudden, you know, you're kicked to the curb or whatever. And you're like, now you have physical divorce that you're dealing with, which makes the disengagement even more intense. Mm -hmm. And it's this vicious cycle. And I got caught in that too. And, and it was like, one day I realized, I was like, it's time. You know, it's time for me to follow my heart. And what happened was, it wasn't even something I planned, David. I, it, was, it was after my last divorce and I was sitting, it was, it was dark, it was in the middle of the night. And, and I literally feel like I heard the voice of God in my heart. And what I heard was, Shannon, do you love yourself? And I sat there and I couldn't speak. I don't even know how much time passed, but for me to be speechless, just, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I sat there and on, you know, I didn't know what to say or what to do because my mind was racing because I was like, okay, if you asked me, I'd say, well, of course I love myself because I didn't hate myself, right? But what I had forgotten was the opposite of love isn't hate, it's fear. And I was in so much fear. And I was so disconnected. I had a divorced heart and I'm sitting there unable to answer. And all of a sudden, this is what I heard. It's okay. I understand. Because in order to love you, you must know you. And in order to know you, you must spend time with you. Mm. So I was like, okay, well, then what? And I heard date yourself, date yourself well. Mm. And then I heard this, stop accepting what you do not desire. Because I was spending so much time dealing with all these things and all these stories in my mind about, you know, this is the way I, I should be or this is the way it has to be and so much. And finally I said, all right, I'm not going to accept anything that I don't desire anymore. Hmm. And I am going to pursue her like never before. Not to fall in love with someone else, not so that somebody else can fall in love with me or to track Mr. Right. I was like, I'm going all in. And let me tell you, David, it has been such an incredible adventure and mm -hmm. such an incredible journey. So that's why I wrote the book. I started, because I went to the internet and I looked up self-love, scary, scary, don't do that. Yeah, don't do um, that. Yeah. And especially back when I wrote the book, I was like, there was nothing except for all the stuff you wouldn't want to be looking at. And then and then, you know, looking at um, date yourself, it wasn't even there. Hmm. And so I said, well, what would this mean to me? And I said, well, I'm going to start with what I would do if I was dating someone else. Sure. I would sit down and I would meet them. <laughs> so I literally met myself there in the dark. And it was the beginning hmm. of a whole new experience and in a, a whole new way of defining and redefining love and what that looks like. And yeah, I recommend it for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, the, the premise of this book, it, it, see if I get this right, that essentially we can't find that love in someone else. We can't accept uh, Mr. or Mrs. Wright to come into our lives and number one, just or have unmet expectations, but also if we're disengaged from our own heart, if we're disengaged from our own passions and interests, one, we're not going to be able to love ourselves and that's going to prevent us from loving someone else. So in order to be fully present, fully 
loving someone, we must first love ourselves. And in order to love ourselves, we need to date ourselves. Did I, did I get that right? Is that pretty close? Beautiful. Well said. Well okay. said. Yeah. And you know, and it's, it's in the dating of ourselves that of course, you know, we, as we're expressing who we are, we share ourselves. You know, we share ourselves with other people because sometimes people go, oh my gosh, like that's a book just for single people, right? And it's like, no. In fact, a lot of my readers are men. A lot of my readers are married, but they're just like, yeah, I want it. And one woman said, oh my gosh, this has changed my relationship with my husband because she's no longer looking and being so needy on him to make her feel validated. She's getting her validation from her soul date, you know, her sipping on life date, getting to know herself and getting to know what true love really is and what it feels like. And then when we begin to share ourselves, oh my goodness, now, as you know, it's in other relationships that we learn even more about ourselves. So this isn't sip simply sitting there being selfish, doing everything self-centered. It's saying, no, you know what? I, I am. So therefore, I will. Mm. And, and it's, like I said, it's been really, truly miraculous, not only in my life, but the people that I'm sharing this new perspective with. Well, I know there's a couple of more lies, but I want, I want to get into these five engagements of a great lover. And by the way, at the end of the podcast, uh, we're going to give listeners a URL to get the book for free. They just have to pay for shipping and handling. So uh, hang in there to the end of the podcast and we'll give that URL to you. But so walk us through, you've got uh, the second part of the book is the five engagements of a great lover. Uh, so tell me, break this down for me. What's engagement number one? Absolutely. So the first one is meeting you. That's absolutely, you meet you. You, you meet you and you find out, you know, what do you like? What do you don't like? Uh, you know, these simple things that we think, oh yeah, but we never really consciously witness that for ourselves and go, oh, I kind of like that. How do I do that? Um, paying attention, being aware. You know, it's really the ultimate self-awareness. Um, you know, and if you look at the word awareness, a lot of times it's a warness that we have like a war going on within ourselves. I know I shouldn't do this. I, you know, should do this and all these shoulds about everything. So like stop shooting on yourself, be aware of what, what feels right for you, what works for you and how you feel and when you feel most alive. And, um, yeah, it's meeting you. And then the second one, is knowing you because once you meet yourself, then you begin to know yourself and you begin to really pay attention to not only how you feel, but okay, so where's this coming from? And, and you start to have the deeper, the deeper conversations because it comes from the deeper questions that we ask. And sometimes David, it's the most simple questions that can have the most profound, you know, impact because like the simple question of, is that true? You know, so often we spend so much time in our heads rationalizing, shooting on ourselves, telling stories about what we think is the truth, but never really acknowledging like what is really true here right now. You know, what is the truth? Give me an example of how that question, we could use that question to help our get to know ourselves better. Okay, great. Um, one of the greatest things that I learned in the process of dating myself has been this. If it can't be interpreted at least two different ways, it's probably not true. And what I mean by that is this. Truth, I think of like truth is like circular. It's, it's a full 360. And right now, you know, if there were other people in your studio, they're in the studio too, but what they're seeing is very different from what you're seeing. Right now, I'm seeing something different than what you're seeing, but it's true. And what happens is, is people get stuck on one side of the truth and they see it only from their perspective. And oftentimes we get so stuck in this like black and white, you know, right, wrong, good, bad, and never say, you know what, what if I were to allow myself to look at all of this? Maybe the reason why that person looked at me that way isn't because they're judging me. Maybe it's because I'm judging myself right now and I don't feel like enough. 
and maybe there's something going on in their life. You see what I mean? So we start to see everything from a, a bigger perspective and a full 360. And when we do that, oh my goodness, it frees us up to truly live from our hearts because we're not so stuck in our heads. Mm. That's good. Okay, so we need to meet, meet you. That's engagement number one. Know you, engagement number two. What's engagement number three? Value you. To truly value you and realize that no matter what you're learning about yourself, no, no matter what you come to know about yourself, you have value. You are valuable. And I call it being valuably free. You know, when you think about the word responsibility, it's the ability to respond. And so whatever it is that we're uncovering and discovering, we have the ability to respond to that and to make decisions based on that. And in our life, you know, in, in my life, in your life, in our lives, to all of the listeners, we all have been given this beautiful gift of life. And we are the most valuable thing, you know, the most valuable, like um, if, if you were, okay, you're writing a, a, a screenplay, you know, and you've, you've written out the script. Well, the leading person in that play is like, nobody can do this for, for my life except me. Nobody can play Shannon except Shannon. Nobody can play David except David. And when we start to see like, oh my goodness, like, if I don't play the role of me first, why am I playing all these other roles? Because then I'm kind of giving a counterfeit. So we start to see the value and the seat that we, the position and the seat that we have in our own lives is the most valuable position. Now, I'm not saying that I've put myself above God, but I'm saying it's God, then it's Shannon. And it used to be God and everybody else. And then Shannon was like, who is Shannon anyway? even though from the outside, it looked like I had it all going on. But that's because I was out here serving everybody, giving everybody what I thought they needed or what they should have without ever really asking some of the deeper questions of myself. So we are the most valuable position in our lives as far as I can't play anybody else's role, they can't play my role, I have to really own my own lane, own my feelings, and not project them onto you and say it's your fault, now, what's my responsibility here? And when we start to own that, we become what I call valuably free. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, uh, you are quite the wordsmith. I mean, you love words. I, love, I do. <laughs> you love words. And you twist words to create this new nuance and this meaning, a 360 meaning of a word. Yeah. You're out of control, Dr. Shannon. Completely. And, and I know this about myself, David. And what's so funny is I don't try to be that way. Yeah, it just I comes naturally. It comes, I see it. And I love probably that. <laughs> I, I've spent a lot of time reading the dictionary. And when I see a word, like say like, no, K-N-O-W, I will go look that word up, even though you and I are like, of course we know it. No. Oh my goodness. You'll start to get a different perspective. And yeah. So yeah, I'm a wordsmith and it's, it's part of my <laughs> gift here to planet earth, I guess. <laughs> I love it. That's so fun. Okay. So I'm meeting myself. I'm knowing myself. I'm valuing myself. What's the fourth engagement? Being yourself. We must be ourselves and be, and okay. Another wordsmith here now. The word better. I'm kind of over better. Kind of like I'm over potential, okay? Better is like, do you know how many people are getting better every day, but they're still S-I-C-K, all right? And people are seeking better, better, better. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars traveling all over the world trying to be better, okay? And I kept thinking, well, okay, if I just learn this, then I'll fix myself. Or if I just do this, then I'll be lovable. If I do... That whole mentality is what perpetuates the epidemic of this not enoughness. Mm. So like, and then, and then, so I gave up better a long time ago. And then I was like, Ooh, I'm into best. 
And then I realized one day I was like, what the heck is best? Because quite honestly, sometimes best looks like this, simply getting out of bed. I redefined best a long time ago to being excellent starting today. Because one day I said, you know what? What really is the best version of Shannon? And I go, ah, it's the true version of Shannon. So what is the true version of Shannon, which takes me back to, you know, engagement one, engagement two, engagement three. And I said, you know what? Both best and better start with B for a reason. If we desire to expand, grow, become, that's another one, B, become better, become our best, be honest with who you are, be her, be him and fully occupy that space that nobody else can for you. And let me tell you, whew, being takes on a whole new meaning. And the last engagement, give it to me. Love yourself, plain and simple, like right there. It's truly love ourselves. And, and, I, and I haven't actually made this public yet, but I'm taking back what I've said up until this point about unconditional love. Because years ago, when I finally realized, like, I had had a, um, an unconscious belief that I wasn't lovable. I didn't know that. But as soon as that unconscious belief came out, and I, because I had been seeking that, and I was like, gave my heart permission to show me, it showed me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't believe that. And I was like, it's time to try on a new belief. So I did. And wow, life has completely changed since then. But this whole idea of that, I remember I, I called my mom and I was like, mom, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been seeking unconditional love from another person. And I've been seeking to be a priority in someone else's life. And it was then that I realized I was like, uh, I heard the voice of God in my heart say, Shannon, are you a priority in your own life? I quickly was like, ah, no, I'm not. And, and then I was like, I have unconditional love. God showed me that. Like, I love you unconditionally. You are made in the DNA of me. You are unconditional love. So that's been my stance on unconditional love. Recently had this revelation. Unconditional love, I don't think there is any such thing except from the one from God. Because of this, unconditional love, it requires us, love, true love, requires that we love in all conditions. Mm -hmm. This idea of unconditional is BS because you know what? We're required. I mean, no, it's not a requirement. I believe the, the full expression of love and truth is loving in all conditions, unconditionally. You see what I mean? But in all conditions. And it's this idea of that. I need to become uh, 10 pounds lighter, 100 pounds lighter, thinner, more successful, more money, get the guy, all this ridiculous stuff that we as humans tell ourselves in order to, you know, really love ourselves. Well, mm -hmm. it starts with loving yourself in all conditions. And when we begin to love ourselves in all conditions, now that's true love. Mm. Make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. Loving ourselves in all conditions unconditionally. And that takes a, that expands it out beyond this idea of simply, mm, I'm going to love, I'm going to love you unconditionally. Yeah, until your person that you're with starts doing some crazy stuff. And you're like, I don't really love you right now, but I'm right. going to choose, I'm going to choose you in this moment. And I'm going to choose the authentic version of you. And when that happens, love changes, you see, transforms. Now, I know in, in your book, you give us some ideas, but, um, and, and we go, you'll go on in great detail in the book. And so people really definitely need to get it to get the, the richness and the depth of how to date themselves. But if I were to go, okay, Dr. Shannon, I want to try this on. I want to date myself practically. Like I'm hearing the concepts of, of the, the engagements, the next steps, meeting myself, knowing myself, valuing myself, being myself, loving myself. But like, what does that look like? Does it look like setting aside time every week? Is it like going on a walk or, you know what I mean? Like give us some examples of how I could, I could tangibly date myself. 
getting connected and staying connected with ourselves and our hearts. Okay, so really locating where we are. Um, and another book I wrote, you know, step one, you kind of really kind of like locate yourself, right? But before the location and locating ourselves, it's exposing ourselves. So it's being willing to get truly honest with ourselves, then locating ourselves and going, all right, where am I? So I take people through a very, um, very incredible process of finding out really how engaged or disengaged you really are. And if you'd like, I can take your people through it right now. And there's Go nine areas, nine areas. So what you'll do is you'll sit down with a piece of paper and a pen. If you're driving, make sure you wait until you pull over until you do this. And the first thing is you're going to rate everything from one to 10. Let your heart speak. Number one is in the area of love. Give yourself a rating, one to 10. Second area is your spiritual. Spiritual aspect of you, spiritual aspect of your life. Give it a rating, one to 10. Next is your self. Your self-care, everything that has to do with you, self. Give it a rating, one to 10. Next, we have time. How are you relating to time? How is your time? You know, a lot of times people say, oh, time management, you know. Well, I don't believe it's necessarily meant to be managed. It's meant to be lived well. So let's look at that and say, all right, time, one to 10. Next one is thoughts. It's our thought lives. You know, on the outside, people see what they see, but what's going on inside of our thoughts, that's what we become eventually, right? So what are your thoughts, one to 10? And then growth. How would you rate the level of growth in your life right now? How much time and attention are you giving to your personal growth? And then life's work. And sometimes people go, what does that mean? Does that mean a job? Well, for some people it can. Uh, I think a life's work is an expanded version of J-O-B, but it's your life's work, one to 10. And then finance, <clears throat> excuse me, finances. You know, how are you with your money and, and wealth and all of that? Take a look at that, one to 10. And last but not least, and believe it or not, this is usually the one that gets the lowest score, fun. One to 10. And I'll tell you why it usually gets the lowest score, David, is because people think they got to get one to eight altogether before they'll take time for F-U-N. And if you really want to see ultimate function in your life, higher level of function in your life, you got to start with the F-U-N. You know, you got to start with that fun. And it's interesting because when I interview or meet really high-powered leaders, a lot of my clients, especially my one-on-one -on -one clients, very high-powered men and women, and success, I, it's really, it's dependent on that, like how much fun are you having in your life, you know? Are you really loving your life well? So you take all of these nine, you add them up, 90 is full engagement. So for all of you who are doing this right now, you're gonna add them up, and you're gonna give yourself a score. What is the score? Now, I'll tell you how to give yourself the rating, the score, the final score. Not the final. It's just where we're starting. The score is this. 45 or less is disengaged. 45 to 63, somewhat engaged. 63 to 90, engagement. And if you really want to go like all in, 90, you can take it to 11 for each of them and get to 99. I believe 100 is only fully like available for after we pass beyond this like earthly life. But having said that, these nine, I, I go through and explain all of this. I have an ebook, a free ebook that people may be interested in as well. And, and I go through each one specifically and then what to do with your lowest three. But that's a great way to begin locating yourself to go, all right, this is where I'm at right now. Um, is this the desires of my heart? No, I desire to be fully engaged. All right, then you can start taking steps daily because you know what is really in need of your attention. You know, you think about it, the greatest thing we can give anyone, including ourselves, is our attention. So when you look at, you know, a real practical step then from seeing, all right, this is where I am, I'm engaged or not engaged, is the 
you know, really the, when we talk about the five engagements of a great lover, and then we look at, you know, seven engagements that really take people through, like, how do you become a great, really a great lover of your life? And how do you fall in love with your life? One of those is learning to become likable. Step, you know, engagement six is likable, able to like. Most people, when they go through life, they will make a big list of everything they want their partner to be like or their life to be like. But, you know, asking ourselves, am I willing to be like that? You know, it, the infamous write your list if you're looking for Mr. Right is to sit down and write all this stuff out. Well, my list was, I think, about 111 things. <laughs> and I was like shocked. I was like, whoa, everything from he's got to love Seinfeld, he's got to love God, you know, all these things, all this stuff. And then one day I said, Shannon, are you, are you that? How can you expect that from someone else if you're not that? So one of the practical things I have all my clients do is write out their list whether it's for a partner or whether it's for their lives and saying, all right, how are you doing that in your own life? Mm. And that right there, if, if people did nothing else but to locate where they are with their engagement or disengagement and then write their list, their list of expectations, and then said, all right, now that's my job description mm. <laughs> right there to be that in my own life for myself. And then I can share that by being that for others. Mm -hmm. But wow, practically speaking, because people think dating ourselves well is like, oh, going and getting a, mani a mani-pedi. I'm all about the mani-pedi. But you know what? The reality is, is like you can do all the stuff on the outside and you're still just simply right. putting, on, putting on, you know, making yourself feel good. Let right. me tell you, dating yourself well sometimes doesn't feel good. Mm. Just like being in love with someone. Oh, this doesn't feel so good. Mm -hmm. Or until you feel like you've been disappointed or you've lost love and it's like, oh my gosh, love hurts. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I would rather love and lose and never really lose than to never love at all, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not just the fluff, fluff on the surface, you know, go buy myself a, a new outfit. There's time for that too, of course. But it's the deeper things that matter most. All right, I've got two, a little bit off the off the wall questions for you to end yeah, with. Yeah. Number one, uh, what is your tattoo on your wrist? Oh, it says adventure. Okay, so I'll tell you the little quick story behind this. It was uh, December twenty third, twenty twelve, and I was in New York visiting my daughter. She's a student at NYU, and we had gone to a church here. Phenomenal. Um, and we had such a great experience for our, our Christmas Eve service. And then um, my daughter wakes up the morning, of, I think Christmas Eve morning, and says, Mom, um, I had a dream last night that I got a tattoo. And I was like, really? And she's like, I, I think I want to get a tattoo today. And I'm like, oh, okay, honey. You know, even though I have a tattoo on my shoulder, I was like, okay, honey. You know, like, I'm, so I'm not against tattoos, but like, what are you going to get? And I, I suggest you put it somewhere where you can cover it up if you would choose to. You know, I go through the whole thing. I sure, like sure. take the mom. The mom. Yeah, Even yeah. though I'm like, you know, I have one in my back. I was like, okay, I'll take you through the list. So she said, well, I, I think I want to simply get a word. And I, I think I want to my wrist. And I said, okay, well, then you could cover it if you wanted, you know, with a watch or whatever. And um, I said, well, what word would you get? She goes, of course, my favorite word. And I was like, adventure. So we're walking over to the tattoo place. I mean, we made this decision like that. And she's like, I, we're walking over there and she goes, mom, you should get one too, should. And I was like, nah, I'm good, I'm good. I said, I don't need another tattoo. And, and she's like, no, but mom, it'd be awesome. We have matching tattoos. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. So we get over there to the tattoo place and he starts doing it and all of a sudden it was like, yeah, I'm doing it. I made this decision, I'm doing it. I put this thing on my wrist, let me tell you, David, I put it on my wrist thinking, oh, I'll probably cover it up, you know, especially when I was working at the cancer hospital. I was like, you know, what are these patients, whatever you think. I have never covered this thing up. This thing has been a reminder because it was right around that time that I started dating myself. It was interesting. And I was like, wow. Yeah, it's a reminder. So adventure. No greater that. adventure than the one of dating and falling in love and loving yourself well.
I love that. All right, last question for Dr. Shannon is, if you were to date any character on Seinfeld, who would it be and why? Oh, that is fabulous. Um, okay. Because <laughs> I know you love Seinfeld. That's why I'm asking. I do. I'm sitting here. I'm like, okay. Um, for go I'm going through all the reasons because I love them all so much, but it would have to be <laughs> Kramer. Now, Kramer, the reason why I say that is this, because he makes me laugh. Now, would Kramer be the guy that I want to date if I want a guy to be like financially taking care of the business? No, but you know what? I take care of my own business, so I don't need someone to take care of my business. But I'm like, yeah, it would definitely be, it would without a doubt um, be Kramer for sure. <laughs> for sure. That is great. That is and great. you know who else? The Wiz. Remember the Wiz? I'm the Wiz. <laughs> yes, yes. Because <laughs> he always cracked me up. I loved his perspective. I was like, he's the Wiz. So anyway, but. Definitely. Kramer's I, my choice. I would like to meet the woman who says that she would like to date uh, the soup Nazi. That would be funny. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting, that would be an interesting mix, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, so um, we let people know that they can actually get this book uh, for free. Uh, they just need to pay yes. the shipping and handling. And yeah. so where can they go to get that? And how, how can they reach out and connect with you if they would like to uh, get your assistance on any other part of their life? Thank you for asking. It's dateyourselfwell.com. And they can reach out and email me if there's any questions at drshannon at drspelledoutshannon.com. And I mentioned my free ebook with the engagement rating. I would, you know, if you want to check that out too, that's totally free. You can get it online at Soul Date Yourself. And that's S O L Date Yourself.com. S O L stands for Sip on Life. Sip on Life. Come yeah. on now. I'm picking up on what you're putting down here. I'm getting yeah. it. I'm getting the yeah. acronyms. Okay, it's good. Yep. All right, so dateyourselfwell.com. You can check out Dr. Shannon's uh, book and get it for free. Just pay the shipping and handling, or you can go to drshannon.com, which is all spelled out. Of course, we'll have all those links to your social media in our show notes at launchyourself.today. So Dr. Shannon, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, and we're excited to have people get your book. Thank you so much, David. And to all your incredible listeners, thank you for allowing me to pour out my words today and my perspective and really... Um, I trust that it's going to awaken some hope in the hearts and souls of women as well as men that will listen. So thank you. And thank you for all the work that you're doing as well. I really appreciate it.